So just a couple hours ago, this came in the mail. This is the Gearbox Pro Ultimate. It just got officially released by Gearbox just two days ago. I've been playing with this bad boy ever since this whole year now. As a matter of fact, the Gearbox Pro Power elongated. Uh, it's been a great paddle. Almost all the videos on my channel have been using this paddle. And as long as you play as the paddle is best suited to be played with, you'll do fine of it, meaning you basically have to speed up everything, be very aggressive. If you try to play the slow game, it's not really going to work out too well. No matter what, I felt that the biggest drawback of the Pro Power had always been within the transition zone, right? So if you're trying to reset the ball, soften them up, it's very difficult to do it, especially as the paddle gets broken into. Now the ultimate's supposed to help us with that, right? It's supposed to be 16 versus the 14. Uh, it's supposed to have much better dwell on it. So maybe it's gonna absorb a lot more of that power when you're in that transition zone. We're gonna see. Now, one special thing about this paddle, well, you can also see it's actually so brand new, I haven't even taken off the 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 wrapper that's above it here what is very different about this paddle and people are going to probably going to start commenting about it soon enough is the fact that the balance point on this paddle is higher than like 99 percent of paddles on the market so what that means is that it's going to feel very head heavy and if you're not used to playing with a very head heavy paddle i'm not um you may want to adjust the paddle as best as you can to try to even out where the weight is. And we're gonna be doing that using tungsten tape and using a little bit of lead. And that's gonna be the premise of this video of how can we set up this paddle in a way that brings its ballast point closer to what the Pro Power looked like. Now, first we're gonna take this whole wrapper off here. Um, we're also gonna be using the Hesacore grip, by the way. That's also gonna help us put some weight below the balance point to move, move it lower. Um, but here's the paddle, right? It's all taken out. I mean, it's, an, it's a nice looking paddle, right? Uh, you can see the difference. I have a little bit of a wrapper here. You can see the difference in the thickness right off the bat, right? Uh, it's clearly, it's still, um, there's, no, there's no frame around it, right? It looks good, it's a good looking paddle. Let's weigh it. Let's just do that. Let's put it on the scale. So mine comes in at 8.1 ounces. This specific gearbox that I have to the left of it, uh, this one was at eight ounces. Uh, I, this is a brand new gearbox, by the way. I haven't even broken in this paddle yet. It only has maybe like three hours of play on it. Um, the Hesse core grip that typically goes on it, it's not on it. So this will come in a little lighter than I normally set it up at. But this gearbox, for example, is at 8.5. With the Hesse core grip, it like would have been closer to about 8.7, I would have to say. So that's the difference. First of all, it's much lighter, obviously, because I don't have, uh, well, there's no overgrip and there's no weights on the side of the paddle. Now, just holding this paddle in my hand, yes, I can feel that there's a lot more weight to the head. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat, I'm gonna try to find the balance point. I'm gonna do it in the most simplest way possible, but I'll do it off camera. I'll take a surface, I'll put it down, I'll kind of see where the paddle tips over. And I'm gonna put a marker there. We're gonna compare that to that current gearbox. Okay, so I just marked the paddle. Uh, I'm gonna hold up both paddles side to side so you can kind of see the difference in the balance point between the two. Look for the black marker on both paddles. You can see that up over here for this one and then for the bottom one is down there, right? So you can see what the difference is between them. Everything else is, it should be aligned perfectly, right? So you can see that there is clearly a difference of where that balance point is. Now, mind you though, I do wanna say, we do have weights on this paddle. We have tungsten tape on the side. We have an overgrip on it. That is gonna bring down the natural balance point of this paddle too. So it's gonna be a, a little bit higher. Um, but we wanna bring this one lower. So we're gonna put everything we can on it. Uh, hopefully keep it to around eight six is our goal. Eight seven at the highest, while getting that balance point similar to what it looks like here. That way when we're hitting the shot, when we're whipping our wrist, it's still gonna feel somewhat similar. Um, so let's begin with that. For starters, we are gonna put some tungsten tape on the neck here, and I already have the strips here. It's about two grams each. So we're gonna put two grams of tungsten tape. 
Uh, I'm also gonna remove this for the time being because as we put on the Hesacore grip and all, uh, it's gonna be in the way. So we're gonna put this, really wanna put it as low as possible in my opinion. Again, everybody can kind of set it up as they want to, uh, but I feel that we wanna get as much weight closer to the handle as we can because that will help us bring that balance point down. Um, and this is the second one. So remember, we had 8.1 on the scale. That's what the paddle was before we be begun doing anything to it. And this one should be like this. And perfect. Okay, so that was simple, right? So we got the tungsten tape here and also here, right? Let's see if that registers yet. So, oops, let me see. Yep, so we're at 8.3 right now. Um, okay. Probably read it a little bit higher than it should have there. So, what we're gonna do now, we are gonna put on the Hesacore grip. So we have to remove the main grip off this. And then I will go off camera and I'll dip the Hesacore grip in some warm water just for like 30 seconds because that makes it way easier to put it on. Um, all right, so there we go. So yeah, it's kind of sticky too. That's gonna make things a little bit difficult. Um, it's getting stuck to my, to my mic there. Uh, we'll put that down, right? So this is how we kind of have it right now. Now, we're gonna try to get some tungsten tape right here at the bottom. Once we get the Hesacore grip up, we'll try to roll it up a little bit, get some more weights right here, and then finish it up with some lead stuck to the bottom, right? That's gonna be our goal. In the meantime, let me get the Hesacore grip ready. Okay, we're back. I have the Hesacore here. Uh, warmed it up just a little bit. We're gonna hope we're gonna get this on easily without ripping it. That would suck if I rip it during the course of this video. For those of you who have done this before, you know it's not easy, so you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm likely gonna speed up this part. All right, believe it or not, it took us less than a minute using that method of putting it into some water first. Um, I'm gonna try to align it a little better to one of my grips. Let me see how I want it to be. Uh, probably something. I'm just kind of going for something a little bit more for my forehand roll volley, which is usually an Eastern grip. Yeah, yeah. That works out pretty well. Um, and the continental grip still feels still feels good. Okay. So we have it on, right? As you as you guys can tell. Uh, it's perfectly fine. What we're gonna do, we're gonna roll up this part right here. You see that? What I'm doing here? We're gonna roll this up. And now we're gonna put some tungsten tape right in this region here. Okay, so let's do that. Peel this off. We're gonna add it here. And since we're putting it underneath the Hesacore and all, it's not really gonna affect the benefit that Hesacore would, normally would give you of the grooves and all. So I see that's one. One of them is on right there. It's, it's basically invisible to the, to the eye. And we will put the other one. We don't want to overlap it too much though. Because that may add a little bit too much thickness, but it just overlaps a little bit. It's not too bad. Okay. So that's it. So now we have both tungsten tapes up there. And now we're simply going to pull this back like this. Bam. And it's like... It's gonna be like nothing ever happened. You see that? Now it's perfectly hidden under there. Now it's perfectly hidden under there. Okay, 
So, I mean, that was the hard part of the video, right? That has a girl grip, and that one, that happened, that worked out pretty, pretty easily. I, I just want to, out of curiosity, kind of see where we are right now in terms of weight. Put it on too early. Okay. So we're currently at 8.6, right? Um, that time was 8.7. Yeah, so it's actually already taken up relatively high. Um, yeah, that's 8.6. Okay. It's between 8.6, 8.7 at the moment. I'm just thinking about the old grip that's going to go on. Um, and then if we want to add weight to the bottom, clearly that's going to push us much higher. But either way, let's get the overgrip going. I think this paddle normally comes in range, you know, and I think 8.1 maybe might be a little higher on that range. Um, but we're going to put the overgrip on right now. And we might still put the weight at the bottom of the grip, even though it's going to push it above where we want it to be, strictly because uh, the weight's going to be below our hand, right? So it's not really going to affect the whipping motion as much. It's not going to really feel that much heavy, right? If we put that extra weight above our hand, it's going to feel much more different as opposed to it being below our hand. Um, so... Let's put our oval grip on. All righty, there we go. That looks perfect. Uh, this is the Toro grip, by the way. It's the one I use almost all the time. I just feel like it absorbs the sweat the best, especially in these hot conditions. So we're going to put that all around. We are going to add this little thing back. I think it's like some sort of like shock absorber. Let's add that to the top. Alrighty. We're also going to reweigh it one more time. Um, See where we are now with this overgrip on. Okay, that looks good though, doesn't it? <laughs> that looks pretty good. Um, let's weigh it again. So 8.9, which makes sense. Normally the overgrip is about two ounces close. That's 8.8, 8.9, which is what we were seeing before of the 8.6, 8.7 that we were bouncing in between. Okay. So we have a final option here, right? Which is adding weight to the bottom, which maybe you'll do depending on how much you wanna bring that balance point down again, right? For this, since all we have is this space to work with, this may look ugly, right? But I took these three gram uh, preset cut lead, cut it in half, so this is one and a half grams, right? And if we just stick this to the bottom, we just stick this to the bottom. Yes, it's gonna look ugly, right? That's how it looks like. Um, I could stick the other one right next to it. And remember, this is going right below our hand. So if anything, that actually can help with the whipping motion. It helps bring some of that back to you that you're losing from a heavier paddle and a heavier head paddle. Um, now, some of you might hold the paddle higher than others. Obviously, it brings the weight. It's completely different, right? I, I hold it normally pretty low, almost my pinky finger off the grip, but no matter what, it's still pretty low there, right? So that is it. It's now set up, right? So we've got three grams right there at the bottom cap. We have four grams around the grip, and then we have four grams in total at the neckline. Uh, plus the Hesicore grip, which has its own weight. Um, granted, we do take off the original grip off, so that kind of you know brings some of that weight lower. Let's get a final read as to how heavy this paddle is. So at this point, we are clocking in at nine, what is that, nine, nine ounces, yep. 
So yeah, this paddle is currently at nine ounces. That might be heavy for some of you guys. Again, we can take this off always, bring it down to 8.8 .8 if need be. But what I'm gonna do now, uh, we have a marker of the previous balance point, right? It's right there next to the P. I'm gonna recheck it right now off camera and see how much lower did we move it. Uh, I can already tell right off the bat, it doesn't feel as head heavy, okay? It doesn't. Yeah, because we stacked so much weight in this region here, you know, of the weights here, the weights there, the Hesacore grip, right? And bringing this pretty low, um, it definitely does not feel head heavy anymore. Um, so let me figure out the balance point. All right, so take a look at this. We ended up bringing the balance point from there, right, to right here. I didn't want to keep scraping it off, but you can kind of see the metallic pen, right? That is a massive difference between the two, okay? If we put that against the Pro Power, just to see how that holds up right now. Believe it or not, we've managed to bring it right to where it is of the Pro Power. Right, see how they essentially align right there? So now both paddles have the same balance point. So it's not gonna feel as head heavy as it would previously. Is it a heavier paddle? Yes, it is. Obviously it's gonna be a heavier paddle. I mean, this paddle here, the, the, the Pro Power, it's hanging out here at, you know, it says 8.5 right now. Yeah, so it's about 8.5 right now, right? This one's at nine. <laughs> so that's seriously, a very, obviously a very big difference, but at least the balance points are the same. And if the resets are much better, if the drops are much better with it, if, it's a, if the dwell time is that much better, that's not a bad sacrifice. You're gonna lose a little bit of hand speed, but it shouldn't be too bad. Now, probably over the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm obviously gonna have to try to break in this paddle as best as I can. This paddle took some time to break in, I would say, uh, quite a bit of play, and it only got hotter and hotter as I broke it in. I am dealing with a back injury right now, so I can't go out and play as, as much as I would like. Uh, I played like once in the last week and it was just like local games. Uh, but when I do get a chance to film some games with it, once it gets broken into especially, I'll give you guys my thoughts about it, right? I'm pretty excited to give it a try, especially since it's 16 millimeters. Uh, it looks good, you know, the paddle. It feels good now, especially with the weights that we added to it. And that is my setup for this paddle and how it's going to be. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, throw it a like and uh, Till next time, see you out there.